Well, welcome to Twisted Pair. It's just going to be just me tonight as Red is off to a wonderful event for Sisters of the Leaves and up in Little Elm. And she wanted to make sure it was okay that I was going to do this uh, by myself. And I said, sure, why not? Let's have some fun. So tonight we got a, I hope it's a good show. For everybody, this is going to be a uh, exploration through a couple of the different white wines, um, an Italian and then a Portugal white wine, a couple of different grape styles other than the standard uh, Chardonnay, Chinon Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc um, that a lot of people are used to. So, uh, and I'm going to be pairing that tonight with a, a Grand. Toronto Noventa. So hopefully we have a good evening. I hope people uh, come in and tune in with me. Otherwise, it's going to be me and we're just going to have some fun. So let's talk a little bit about the wines. Uh, I wanted to go with white wines tonight because white wines are generally a little bit harder to pair with than your red wines. Uh, let me see if I can. And the, the reason why they're a little bit harder is because of their, their profiles. Um, typically you're gonna have very tropical fruity profiles or very uh, citrusy profiles, a lot of acid, you know, so, you know, very acidity, acidic. Um, so, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit more challenging to pair with, but it's a lot of fun. Um, these grape styles that, I'm, that I've chosen in these two wines are also, as I stated, are different. Uh, they are very citrusy grapes, but they are also have a lot of tropical, um, tropical fruit notes to it. Um, so you're going to get some lemon. Uh, you're going to get some grassy notes out of it. It's going to be very acidic. Um, they are going to be dry. Both of them are. But we'll also pick up some, uh, you know, possibly some green apple uh, nose to it, you know, so some of your basket type fruits, um, you know, maybe even get some banana type notes in there as well. So I have not done these pairings. I'm looking forward to it, I'm looking forward to the journey on this. Uh, I do have two different wine glasses, both of these are empty, so I know which ones are going into where. And this one is from Italy, and this is the Vermentino, and this is a 2019. The Vermentino uh, is the El Monticello uh, Grappolo, and this is, like I said, it's a Vermentino. Uh, this grape and this wine is known to have, you know, as I was saying, your more citrusy type notes. Uh, you know, very much some uh, uh, green apple notes as well, uh, some grassy notes on it. So as you can see from the color, we've got a nice uh, crisp white, uh, kind of a little bit of a yellow, a um, little bit of gold, gold into it, yellow on, yellowing on it. And so it's a beautiful color to a white. Definitely picking up some citrus notes on, on the nose. And I would say that uh, I'm getting a little bit more of an apricot type uh, aroma on the nose as well. All right, so that's the, that's the, the El Monticello. The other one is the Casa Americano, and uh, this is out of Portugal. This is out of the Dao uh, region in Portugal. And this grape is 40% uh, Bacal, 30% uh, 
terrestrial bronco and 30% and and cruzado. Uh, not as familiar with these grapes. I uh, do know that I enjoyed it when I when I tried it. Otherwise, I wouldn't bought it. I mean, really, why am I going to buy a wine I don't enjoy? So again, you can see the color on it. It is a nice white color. This one has less citrusy on the notes, on the nose for me. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of picking up like a little bit of maybe a charred oak on it. You can compare the colors of the two. Uh, this one here, the Casa Americano from Portugal is a little bit richer in tones than the El Monticello. So let's, Let's delve in. Let's dive into these. So, the way I'm going to approach this is the way that I approach most any pairings. I'm going to go with what I'm less familiar with. Okay. So, since I'm less familiar with the wines than I am the cigars, and the cigar is the, the Toronto Noventa, and this is a Habano wrapper uh, from Nicaragua. So, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. Uh, with the Habano wrapper. And you can tell by the color of the wrapper uh, that it's more of a natural than it is a Maduro. And what that just means is that the wrapper itself did not sit in the fermentation pile, you know, in, in, the, in the pilons, the fer fermenting as long as it would if it was a Maduro or a so it's a little bit more of a natural. Since I've smoked a few of these, I'm going to go with the wines first so that we can talk a little bit about the wines. And I went with the Nicaraguan and the one that I went with because I generally don't recommend pairing a Nicaraguan with a white wine. Because Nicaraguans are typically known for its spicier, more peppery type notes that you get on as as you've heard us talk about on the shows in the past and so normally what i would go with a white wine would be a dominican Repub you know cigar dominican you know much more um medium bold those earthy tones the citrus notes the um you know maybe some stone fruit type notes you know as opposed to your chocolatey or your peppery or your you know very creamy notes that you get in, in a nicaraguan um, I would go, absolutely would choose a, a say, an Ecuadorian cigar. Um, you know, an Ecuadorian Habano, you know, something along that line in a, um, in your cigar to pair with a white wine. As far as foods with these, um, foods with both of these wines, really good with, would go really good with pork. It's going to go really good with it with a fish, especially a lighter fish. Um, probably would stay away from your from your heavier fishes, but you could. Uh, I definitely would not pair this with a with a, a really gamey steak because if you do so, then you're going to lose the the steak is going to overpower the wine on these. And so just like as we've talked, you've heard us talk about so many times in the past of when you're pairing a cigar with your drink or your food, you don't want one to overpower the other. I don't want my food to overpower the notes of the cigar to, or my drink to overpower the notes of the cigar so that I lose the notes on it. So I don't get to pick up the flavors out of a cigar or vice versa. Same thing with your wines and your foods. You, you want to match in, in wines what we would call the intensity in the body. Okay, so a full body, heavy, full bodied wine is going to go really nice with a heavier, full bodied um, 
meal, such as a steak or such as, uh, you know, such as a, a soup that's, you know, really got a, a nice, thick, heavy, creamy gravy on it. All right, so let's get into the wine. This is the, this is Monticello. Again, this grape is the Vermentino, and this is out of Italy. Nice color to it. Mm. And this is the 2019 vintage on it. And and this is this is nice. This is it's very well rounded. It feels well rounded in the mouth. It's got some slight buttery notes, but I'm definitely picking up on the on the citrus with it. Um, getting a uh, getting getting some some apples, some some green apples for sure with this. I'm not really getting the apricots on the palate as I did on the nose on it. And I still, I'm still picking up the apricots on the nose, but I'm not as much in, in the palate as when, when, I'm, when I'm sipping on this. Now, I, I wanna call out something here. Um, as you've heard me talk about in the past, when I'm, when I'm nosing a bourbon, that I don't stick my nose directly into it. And the reason why is because all I get is the proof of it. And, you know, until my system is acclimated on that. Here, you see me sticking my nose into it and I'm just coming directly into it so I can get the full aroma. That's because there's not as much proof. There's not as much alcohol in wine, obviously. I mean, these are both, I believe, um, this one is coming in at 12.5%. At so that would be considered a medium uh, level of alcohol. And the uh, other one is 13%. So I love alcohol on wines, unless it's a, a, a fortified wine, like a port or a, um, or a sherry are going to be around, the higher level alcohol is gonna be around that 14, 15%. So it's anywhere from, Ten and a half percent up to fifteen percent, and generally is your is your general range, and so these are both coming in right in that that middle level. Um, acidity level on this is nice; it's it's enjoyable. So it's going to be interesting to see how the how this one pairs with it. Okay, I'm going to cleanse my palate before I go to the cigar. Now this is the, the Costa Americano. And this is a white blend. Again, it is 40% Bacal, 30%, uh, and, and I'm butchering the name, Cerecio Bronco, and 30% Incruzado. Incru and these are this is Portugal, and all of these are Portugal grapes. And both of these wines are, are low dollar wines. Uh, Twenty dollars for the Il Monticello, and uh, twelve dollars for the Casa Americano. Very very citrusy. Much much more citrusy than than the Italian wine. Um, Lots, lots of apples, lots and lots of apples on this one. And, and lemon, that, that citrus, that citrus is lemon where, um, well, they're, they're both lemon, but this one is, it's especially on the back of the tongue. On the very back of the palate is where it's very much uh, a, um, almost like a lemonade type lemon. Not sweet, but no, no means sweet. But you, if you, you're with me and you understand what I mean by that, that lemonade type lemon, not like if you're, you know, squeezing the lemon juice and, and you're sucking on the lemon itself or you're drinking, you know, for some reason you're just sipping 
straight up lemon juice, but it's very much a a um, citrusy lemonade type lemon is, is how I would describe it. And and it's interesting is where I was getting charred oak on the nose and still am. I'm not getting that on the palate, and I don't. Unfortunately, I don't know whether or not these were aged in um, oak barrels. Um, some white wines will be. You can get a uh, Chardonnay, a, an oak, uh, a white oak uh, Chardonnay. Um, Chile is is a region that really does a lot with their, the oak Chardonnays. So I'm not getting the oak, those oak type tannins from this. And, and in fact, white wines have no tannins in it. Acidity levels, and that's going to help make it drier. But your tannins in your wines come from the grape skins. And in making a white wine, they remove the grape skin before they, before they start pressing them and start pressing the juice out. So it's, it's just the pulp of the grape itself. There's no skin in, in the process as it gets removed immediately. So I'm going to light up the cigar, and I am going to go with a perfect cut on this. This is a Robusto in size, and a thin perfect cut here. The reason why I'm going with the perfect cut is because when I'm doing my pairings, I want I want a fuller body of smoke coming in. Now, I was reading an article the other day to where they said that, in the article, it said that it, the more smoke you get, the less flavor you get, which seems to me is kind of count, counterintuitive, considering the only thing that we get in our mouth, in the cavity of our mouth, when we're smoking a cigar is smoke. Okay, I'm not getting any tobacco in there. And in a cigar, I've got tobacco, I've got the flame, the heat, the cherry, and I've got the smoke. So the flavor comes from the smoke. So the less smoke I have, the less I'm going to be able to pick up on the flavor. Now, what they did say, or let, yeah, less smoke I have, less I'm going to be able to pick up on the flavor. Now, they did state that if you have too much smoke in, in your mouth, then all you're going to taste is smoke. And there, I do see that. I'm sure that there's some truth to that. But I would say that that is more on the experience of the smoker rather than the amount of smoke itself. And again, a cigar, a full-bodied cigar is going to produce more smoke. Um, and that's going to come down to how, you know, much, how well it's been rolled, what the combustion is, um, you know, on the on the pillars. And again, just to because it's always good to to repeat and be repetitive. The way that I'm lighting this is, I'm letting the flame kiss the foot of the cigar. And I'm rotating the cigar throughout the lighting process. And what I'm looking for on here, which you can't really see, is I'm looking for a nice coverage of the white ash. Might be able to see that in there. So I'm looking for nice, even white coverage for the, for the white ash. And I'm coming just right across it as opposed to going in it. If I'm going in it, then I'm directing that flame directly into the center part. And so this would be con considered toasting of it. Now, a lot of people will tell you toast the edges, which there's nothing wrong with that, and then bring it up. But as I'm drawing in, again, I'm drawing that flame directly through, and I'm going to be burning those oils to where by letting it caress, letting it kiss, and then possibly shaking it like this, moving the oxygen through it, and I get a much nicer, calmer 
uh, light to it so that I'm not just immediately burning those oils and getting that that char of those oils in my initial draw, which allows me to be able to really start tasting the notes on a cigar sooner than later. Now, what I'm going to be looking for on this, so I'm going to be looking for what, what some of those initial notes that I'm going to get on this. Now, knowing that this is a Nicaraguan, I know that, you know, and this is a, um, a, a halap, I mean, I'm sorry, a Habano wrapper, and that it's a natural color. I know some basics of what I'm going to get right off the bat on this. Now, keep in mind, Nicaragua's got four main regions where tobacco is grown. Esteli, the most well-known. Jalapa, which is up in the mountains, down in a valley. So actually at a lower, uh, because it's in the mountains, but it's in a valley, it's at a, a lower um, sea level than what Esteli is. Esteli is a vast region, and so it's going to have variations on the, the terroir, the soil. You're going to have some volcanic soil, you're going to have some very fertile, you know, very um, fertilized floral soils. Then you have Condega, which is just outside of Esteli. And that's going to be much more volcanic. And then you're going to have Ometempe, which is an island in the inside of uh, Nicaragua. Uh, an island on a lake in, inside of Nicaragua. Now, I've never been there, so I can't describe what any of this looks like to you, but this is just information that I've gathered from talking to uh, other people, such as uh, Luciano, who that's, that's his home where when he's in South America or in down, down in that area making his cigars. His, his cigars predominantly come from Nicaragua. So what I'm looking for, back to what, what I started off with, what I'm looking for when I'm taking a draw is one is I'm looking for how hot that draw is. I'm looking for how easy it is to take a draw. Am I really struggling um, to, to get the smoke into, into my mouth so that I can start tasting it? Then I'm also trying to focus a bit more on what type of notes am I getting that's outside of your standard notes in a cigar, such as your leather, your tobacco, your pepper, if it's a Nicaraguan, your green grass, or your earthy notes, if it's, uh, you know, if it's another region. Uh, and you can get earthy notes absolutely uh, from Nicaragua. It's just not what they're known for. They're known for more of the spicy, peppery, um, and you know the chocolatey, um, creamy type notes from those regions. And as expected, I'm definitely getting some creamy notes on this. Not a lot of pepper at the front. I expect the pepper to pick up as we get more into the second and final third of the cigar. Very creamy, it's very nice. It's um, it's almost a, a, a white gravy type creamy as opposed to say like a marshmallow type creamy. It's not sweet. It's very well rounded. Um, it's got some earthy notes to it. Zero pepper on the retro at all. Zero pepper on, on, on the retro. So again, this is the uh, this is the Toronto 90. This is the Noventa cigar. 
on this. And, and this, this has been enjoyable. Uh, it's been sitting in my humidor. The box has been sitting in my humidor for, um, I want to say coming up on a year. Coming up on a year that they've, that they've been sitting in there. So it's got some, you know, they've been allowed to, you know, calm down. It's been allowed to ferment a bit more. It's been the acidity, ammonia levels have been allowed to um, cool down some and really start evening out. So, that, so, so far, this is a, a very enjoyable, enjoyable smoke. Going to get a little bit further into it, and we're going to see how it pairs. All right, so let's see what we got here. So I'm going to go with the uh, the uh, Monticello, the Italian. The, again, this is the uh, uh, Vermentino. This is a Vermentino grape. So here's the bottle. Italian white. Again, I was getting um, getting citrus notes on the nose. I was getting a little bit of uh, um, apricot notes on the nose and on the palate I was getting uh, definitely citrus, um, getting a little bit of uh, green apple, a uh, little bit of butteriness or a little bit of oils. Not really a lot of change from the cigar to the wine. Not a lot of change to it. So that can be indicative of two things. It can be indicative of the, the boldness of it, the intensity of both of these are very nicely balanced. It could be indicative that the wine is too strong for the cigar and will overpower the cigar. So we'll know in just a minute. But that's just off of the for the first puff and sip. So let, let's let's take a, another one and see what see where we got. I would say there's a very, very, very subtle change in the, insist, the um, intensity of the acidity of it. The flavors themselves are, are still there. They haven't gone away any. The, the notes is still, still the, um, the citrus, still the lemon, still the green apples. Um, But it does seem a little bit. It does. It does seem a little bit sharper, if that makes sense. So that little bit sharper, crisp, from the acidity of it, which is nice. I'm, I mean, it's nice. I, I would. I would smoke these. Smoke and drink this one together. Before, you know, again, going that direction. Let's see how it is, from the wine to the cigar. Okay, now that's interesting. Right off the bat, the first draw after I took a sip from the wine, right off the bat uh, was a bit more grassy type notes. Remember I said, you know, in the first, before I was started the pairing, that this was getting a little bit of earthy notes to it. So right off the bat, I'm getting a bit more of the grassy 
type notes in this. So that, that's interesting. Um, I would say, I would say that I probably enjoy going from the wine to the cigar a little bit more than the cigar to the wine, not because one was better than the other, but I enjoyed a little bit more because I like I like that change in the notes. I like to see how one impacts the other. That's just my personal preference. Also keep in mind that while my bottles were chilled, it is a hundred degrees out here. And so the wines have warmed up a little bit. Um, so that's gonna have an impact on how the wines taste. Very small, not, you know, not a great, but it, it is going to how the wines taste a little bit. So I, I understand that. Um, very, very nice. Okay, so this is the person, this is the, this is, it's the full name is Coley, Coley de Luni Vermento um, from Il uh, Le Monticello. Is is the wine is the winery is the the grappolo and so the grape itself is the vermentino grape. All right, let's uh, cleanse the palate and let's try the Casa Americano. Always have to have some water with you. Always, always have water with you when you're when you're doing a tasting, when you're doing a pairing, and you want to see how how they they blend together, how they work together. So this is the the Casa Americano again. This is a, a Portugal wine. Um, all right, so we're gonna go the we're gonna go the same direction. We're gonna go from the the cigar to the wine. Very interesting, very, very interesting. Okay, so right off the bat, the oils, the viscosity, the oils of, of this one is much more prominent on it. Which I'm gonna have to revisit the, the uh, Monticello in, in a minute to, to see that. So, so I'm really paying attention, but the oils just really came out. The, of viscosity of of this, the mouthfeel was just much more prominent than than what it was by itself. Um, also, the um, the citrus levels have gone down on this, so this really toned down the the acidity, uh, the lemon. It's not as um, forward allowing me to pick up more of those uh, tropical fruits. Uh, so a bit more, a little bit of sweetness, which is interesting because this wine is not meant to be sweet. It's not a sweet wine, it's a dry. Uh, but a little bit of, a little bit of banana. I, I gotta try this again. Little bit of banana, a lot of apple on this. And there's the lemon. There's the lemon. Lemon's at the very, very, very back of the palate just as it's finishing. I think I like this pairing a little bit more. Let's let's, let's try it going from the drink to the cigar. Hmm. So the creaminess 
the creaminess that I was talking about in the cigar is is gone. Going from the wine, the the Portugal wine, the Casa Americano, to the cigar, the creaminess is gone. Now what I'm getting is uh, I'm 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 getting a very 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 subtle uh, grass hay type grass, but definitely getting the pepper on the back. Um, it's almost like it's wiped out. Uh, it, it's almost like it's just completely wiped out the um, the viscosity of the creaminess of the cigar, allowing the subtle notes of the pepper to come forward where I wasn't even picking up on that. On, in the first third of the cigar. And I'm still in the first third, starting to come into the second third. So that could be the reason why I'm starting to pick up more pepper because I'm starting to come into the second third of it, but I'm, I'm not sure. No pepper that time. Still the earthiness, still still the, the hay. Um, hmm. Okay, the creaminess is still there. It's there on the retro. It's interesting. So wine to cigar, wine to cigar is not as good for me. I'm I'm really thinking that that this this wine, because of how strong the acidity levels are in it, because of how strong the the your citrus notes are in this wine, that it's maybe a just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit overpowering the cigar. It's not unpleasant by any means. Don't get me wrong. It's not unpleasant. It's just, I end up losing out a little bit on the cigar going from the wine to the cigar. Not everybody's going to pick up on that, though. I really don't think. I don't think everybody's going to pick up on those those types of changes. So I would not call this a bad pairing. And keep in mind, we're only into really now coming into the second third of the cigar. So we'll, you know we'll keep revisiting this throughout to to see to see where you know to see how it changes to see what it does with it. But when you're pairing cigars to anything, you want to you want to, to be able to pick up on those nuances, those subtle changes. Not a lot of subtle changes on these. Um, both are pairing good. I would not consider it exceptionally well. It's a pairing that I would revisit. It's not a pairing that I would turn somebody away from, which is really, it's kind of surprising and it's kind of nice. I'm, I'm pleased with this because this is a Nicaraguan cigar, which I generally, as I stated earlier on in the show, that I generally would not recommend a Nicaraguan cigar with a white wine. And so I've got two different white wines I understand they're not your standard normal white wines. Neither of them are Chardonnay. Uh, neither of them are a Sauvignon Blanc. Neither of them are a Zinfandel, Chenin Blanc. Your standard white wines, you know, that you go and pick up. They are uh, different. One is uh, is the uh, the old world Italian. Uh, Vermentino, 
And the other one is the Casa Americana from Portugal. This is a Dow. And it's the Bacal, uh, Thericio, Bronco, and Encruzado. Uh, beautiful bottle, beautiful wines. Uh, this one was rated as a best buy by wine enthusiast. Uh, 13% ABV uh, comes out of Portugal. Here it says, okay, I haven't read the notes on these. It says yellow lemon color. Yes, agreed. Nice aroma with floral and citrus notes. Yes, agreed. Uh, palette is delicate with crisp acidity and a refreshing finish. Okay. And it's really easy to say that in the palette on a, on a white wine. You know, white wines are supposed to be crisp. Uh, uh, they're supposed to be acidic, um, very refreshing, You're supposed to drink them cool. It's 100 degrees out here still, hard to drink anything cool out here. See what it says on the notes on this. Okay, so this is the Italian. It says on the notes, intense aromas of, aromas of pear and white flowers, notes of ripe citrus and white fennel and thyme. Um, didn't really get the fennel and thyme on this. I could see the pear. I went more with the apricot um, and green apple. So yeah, pear is going to kind of, on the nose, it's going to kind of have a little bit of a cross between those. It'd be easy to go one way or the other. On the palate, uh, fresh, safe, and balance. Yes, agree with that. A uh, great pairing with white meat finish, perfect as, a, as an aperitif. Um, I, I, again, you know, they, they say palate, excellent, fresh, and stuffy balance. So, so yes. Um, that's what I'm expecting to get on a white wine. Just like you drink a bourbon, I'm expecting to get caramel and vanilla. If I drink a, a scotch from, from an Islay scotch, I'm expecting to get heat, medicinal, maybe a little bit of smoky. If I'm drinking a scotch from um, Highland Space Side, uh, I'm expecting to get fruity floral type notes, less of the less of the smoky, less of the peaty on those. That's expected. I'm expected to get on a cigar tobacco with a little bit a little bit of hints of leather these are the standard type of notes which you're going to get what um what our purpose and what our attention here with leaf and grain is to explore beyond the standard expected types of notes to go deeper into what you're going to get out of it whether it's a cigar whether it's a wine, white wine, red wine, coffee, um, bourbon, rye, whiskey, scotch, tequila, even some, even some vodkas. We want to go into that next level and explore some of those nuances that you can pick up if you're able to if your palate is grown, matured enough, and you're able to hone in on those types. So that, that's, that's the goal of what we're trying to do. And that's what we're talking about here. And so that's where some of those things that I was picking up that was a little bit, um, a little bit different than, than what they were describing. And that's also why I don't read the tasting notes from a cigar or the tasting notes from a drink, a wine, uh, a wine, whiskey, spirit, before I try it myself. Because I don't want to be influenced by what it is, but I don't want to be influenced on what I'm getting based upon what they're saying. And, and we're, we can easily be influenced by that. So if anybody is still on, please, you guys let me know if you have any questions. 
Um, what are you drinking and smoking today? What are you pairing? Let me know. Are you trying to wine? What kind of wine are you trying? What cigar are you are you pairing it with? Is anybody still out there? Is anybody there? 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 So I'm going back to the, the to the Monticello. I want to see how if if the cigar and the um and the wine have any effect on if the cigar has any effect on the the oils, the body of the wine, the uh, viscosity of the wine. Yeah, I'm not picking up any, any changes there whatsoever. The uh, the Italian wine does remind me a bit more of a um, of a Northern California Chardonnay. Uh, also, you can describe it as a cooler region Chardonnay. Uh, it does remind me a bit more of, of that. Uh, the acidity notes, the lemon notes, the um, the the grassy notes it's the crispness of it it's there's not a lot of there's not a lot of body on this it's a very light bodied wine um it, it's very nice and very enjoyable it's something that that you could drink on a on a nice hot summer day that's what i'm doing now Portugal wine. Um, I'd probably go with Sonoma. So Albert had from the audience. Um, actually, no, Albert, I would probably go more more Napa. You're going to want something that's going to be a little bit higher up in the mountains, a um, little bit more of a cooler region. Uh, Sonoma is a bit lower. Gonna be a little bit warmer, so you're gonna get more of the more of the um, tropical fruity notes. So you're gonna get more bananas, more apricots, more peaches type, as opposed to the the crisper, cooler climate type notes, such as the such as the citrus, the lemons, the apples, the pears, etc. On that. And and that's describing a that's describing a, a Chardonnay. With your Chardonnays, you you'll have uh, different styles, different types of uh, profiles based upon elevation, climate. Is it a cooler climate, as or as opposed to to a, a warmer climate? And and you'll get the same thing. What you know, whether it's a Californian or whether it's you know this is a a burgundy style uh, Chardonnay or, you know, an Australian Chardonnay. Um, depending upon the climate, is it a cooler climate or a warmer climate, is going to have an impact on the types of notes that you get, even though it's from the same grape. It's the same, the same grape environment has a lot to do with it. And you've heard us talk about this all the time on, on your tobacco where the cigar tobacco is grown, what the elevation is. Is it high up in the mountains? Is it getting to, into the rockiness as they were moving up closer to the alpine uh, alpine lines? 
Um, is it lower in the valley? Is it volcanic regions? Is it uh, very drier, more um, earthy type regions such as Dominican Republic? You know, there are a lot of the reasons why so many uh, farmers like the Dominican Republic is because they get less rain there, even though it's an island surrounded by water. Uh, because they get less rain, they have more control over uh, the water. They have more control over of how it, how much water it gets, so how much fertilization uh, the plant gets while it's before it's been harvested. Both are very good wines. Very enjoyable wines. Would highly recommend trying them both out. The cigar itself pairs better with, now that I'm in, well into my second third, pairs better with the Italian than it does with the Portugal. These grapes are very, very, very interesting. They're very, very, um, they're, they're very unique on their palates. They're very unique on, on their profiles. And, and while I stated that the Vermentino is, is, reminds me of the Chardonnay, it's not a Chardonnay. Um, I wish I had a Chardonnay to, to try all of these together, but I, I did, didn't have a Chardonnay. Um, very affordable wines. I mean, this this is the Italian, and I'll list as I post this on on YouTube in the in the description. I'll list the wines, the names of the wines. Uh, this is a twenty dollar wine. I mean, it's a very nice, very affordable price point. Uh, this is a twenty nineteen vintage of it. And uh, this is also the 2019 vintage. This is the Casa Amer Americo. Uh, this is the Portugal wine. And this is a 12 to 13 dollar wine, really. And I mean, and this little gold sticker right here says that this is a wine enthusiast best buy. Uh, I don't remember what the points, you know, what they what they pointed it on. It. Um, if they're saying it's a best buy, I'm going to say that they're classifying this as, as an 85 point or above wine. Um, again, the grapes on this is a 40% Bacal, 30% Cericio Branco, and 30% Encruzado. Um, both very good. Uh, this one is uh, out, out of Dow from Dow, uh, Dop out of uh, Portugal. So, so very good. All right. So what kind of cigars would I recommend pairing with both of these wines? The cigar, the uh, Toronto, uh, the, the Toronto Noventa. Uh, this is a um, Nicaraguan. It's a Habana wrapper. It's a, you can see from the color of it, it to where the light can be seen. This is more of a natural as opposed to Maduro. It's a, it's a good cigar. You know, it's a cigar. I, I bought a box of them. I enjoy them. Did I enjoy these pairings? Yes, I enjoyed the pairings. Is it something that, that just wowed me and I would put down in my book as, as one of my top pairings ever? No, no. Are there better pairings? Absolutely, there are better pairings for, for e either of these. Um, I would go with with both of these. I absolutely go would go with a um, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Uh, the the more the lighter the floro type uh, shade on it, because you're going to want to keep some of the acidity levels in there to match up with the wine. Um, 
I would go with uh, a Dominican Republic. Again, I would go with your what what we classify as your lighter bodied cigars or lighter medium bodied cigars because of the color of the wrapper on it. But you know how I, I, I do not like that description. So um, medium bold cigars, more stick more towards the earthy tones, the earthy notes, your tropical fruit notes, your um, Uh, something that's got a, a little bit more on the acidity levels of this. Uh, uh, the Fiat Lux, and I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me say this, but the Fiat Lux would go great, would go great with these. Um, Pichardo, the Pichardo uh, Natural would go good. Not as good as the Fiat Lux. However, um, some of my father's, uh, some of the cigars from my father, the ones that have the uh, Ecuadorian wrappers on. It. And if you remember back a couple of months ago, we had a contest of wanted you to try an Ecuadorian wrapper cigar and send in your notes on that cigar. And the reason why we wanted you to do that is so that you can start picking up on some of the subtle nuances. Well, I don't know if you remember me saying that after the contest was over, that some of the notes that you should pick up on, you know, as your palate matures and you get into it, is some more of the uh, tropical fruits. Ecuador's number one uh, export is bananas. So the soils is very rich with, uh, with the uh, nutrients from bananas. Uh, there's a lot of cross pollination from the from the banana plantations into into the tobacco. So it stands to reason that you're going to pick up a bit more of that, along with the standard notes of, of the the earthiness, the the um, the fields the the fields of lemongrass, the fields of hay that that. Uh, is that you get to know in, in Ecuador, especially from, from the Sumatra wrapper, which uh, is one of the greatest, one of the best places to get a Sumatra wrapper is from the Oliva family there in Ecuador. So coming into, coming into the halfway through the cigar, And I think I'm going to go with uh, the Monticello, the Italian, to, to continue on with this. So please, guys, folks, let me know in the comments of, of what you think. Um, what do you think on this exploration of, of white wines? White wines are, as stated, are very difficult to, to pair with uh, because of how citrusy, citrus forward the wines are, the, the white grapes are, um, because of the types of notes. And it's just a little bit more of a challenge to pair those with a, with a cigar. It's not impossible just a little bit more of a challenge. And this is why this is why we do what we do here. Uh, some of the most challenging pairings that I have done um, have been with white wines, uh, have been with uh, champagnes, have been with um, with cocktails because of primarily with cocktails because of the complexity of, of the drink itself and and all the different types of flavors but even in even in the trainings you know and, and talking to other to other people who do cigar pairings you very 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 rarely ever see them say pair you know what what kind of pairing that they would recommend with white wine in fact they would say 
I don't recommend pairing a cigar with a white wine. And I've talked with with a sommelier, uh, you know, when they, you know, explaining to them what it is that that we do here at Leaf and Grain. I've heard many of them come back and say, "Oh, I don't know that I would I would pair a cigar with with a with a white wine." So so let's go into that a little bit. And we kind of talked a little bit of, of, of that at the beginning of the show, but I want to kind of delve a little bit deeper on that. Let's think about the foods that we pair white wines with. In fact, we can read from the bottles of what they recommend on the pairings. Um, this one here says white meat and fish. Okay. And the... Uh, the Casa Merico, um, it says white meat, white meat and fish as well. And oh, and one thing I didn't notice on this, so so you heard me say that that this one had a little bit more, um, its oils were a little bit heavier, the viscosity of it was a little bit, a little bit more, and it had I was picking up some some charred oak. So a bit more in the earthy type notes from it. It says here that uh, Casa Merico is located at the heart of the uh, Cerro da Estrella subregion, a privileged area to produce Dow wines. The vineyards range between 500 and 600 meters above sea level and are planted in granite soils utilizing traditional varietals. So with this wine, just because of the terroir that it's grown, that stands to reason why I'm picking up a bit of more of those earthy type notes from it. So now imagine pairing that particular wine with a, with a Cuban or Dominican uh, cigar, to where those earthy notes are just really strong, really predominant, you know, really forward as opposed to really subtle, which they are on, on this, this Toronto. The Toronto has the earthy notes to it, as I stated from the beginning, but it's a Nicaraguan. It's not its predominant profile that you're gonna get. So with white wines, the types, you're, the types of foods that you're pairing it with, are foods that are lesser in fat, uh, not gonna be as salty, not gonna be as heavy on the palate, much lighter on the palate, okay? So your white wines are much lighter on the palate as well. That's why they're, you know most of your white wines are lighter bodied, what you consider lighter bodied, medium body wines. Uh, Pairing cigars to those, a lot of people don't recommend that because a lot of people don't know the different nuances, the different flavor profiles that you can get in a cigar. They look at a cigar as full, medium, or light body, full, medium, or light strength. It either has a lot of spice, peppery to pepperiness to it, or it doesn't. So to those who aren't in to it the way we are, they're not going to come back and say, oh, yes, this will go really good with a white wine. I, I've heard people say that uh, they don't they don't want to try to pair a cigar with, say, a, a, an IPA, a, a double IPA, double hops or triple hops IPA because of the same types of reasons. They They think that it's, you're not going to be able to pick up on flavors that are going to go together. And that's true. It is more of a challenge, but you really got to focus in and hone in on the types of notes that you get from your cigar to be able to pair your cigar to your drink. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. And I hope this is kind of honing in on some of the points that, that we've been making on, on that Red and I have been making on the shows up to, up to this point. Oh, man, I get to relight it now. 
So any questions up to this point on, on what we're talking about? What's what's some of the what's some wines that that you have paired cigars with? Or or let's doesn't even have to be wines. What are some of the lighter body style of drinks that you have looked at in your pairings? You know, IPAs, teas. What what are some what are some of the lighter bodied more earthy type drinks that you've paired cigars with and what has been your experiences with those? Okay, so I challenge you as I, I didn't get any comments in on this. I challenge each of you, those who are on who are in the in the live chat, those who view this later, I want to challenge you to explore some of your lighter bodied, lighter drinks. So your your white wines your your lighter bodied um, beers, your your lagers, your IPAs, your ales, um, your weeded weeded uh, beers, your wheat beers, your uh, BPAs, Belgian pale ales. Look at some of those and start thinking about what type of cigar, that you would pair to those and pick out one, find a cigar, find a cigar that's going to be a, a lighter to medium body cigar. Don't focus in if you're a, if you're a full body of, you know, full body cigar smoker. Don't focus in so much on what you're not getting that you're normally used to and focus in on some of the notes that you don't get, that you don't normally pick up on because you don't smoke these types of cigars. So focus in on those notes, focus in on, the, on those types of flavors. Step outside of your box. Find something, find a drink, such as a Belgian wheat ale, a Belgian pale ale, uh, IPA, uh, a white wine. Um, focus in on the notes that are in that drink. So the um, the sweetness of of a wheat, or the grassiness of an IPA, the hoppiness of an IPA, the citrusy, the apple notes, the pear notes the peach, um, apricot type notes that you would get in a white. You have to really focus in to move past that these are not your standard types of drinks and cigars to go to. You have to move past mentally why it is that you don't go to those. So if you're not a white wine drinker because you don't like the dryness of it, so move past that. So try to Try to not focus in on the fact that it's a dry and focus in on the notes that you are getting on it and how you would pair what you would pair that to. This is what we mean by explore the pairing. So this is this is my challenge to everybody. Okay. I want you to, we say it every week, closing out the show, explore your pairings. I want you to. Step outside your box of what you normally go through, what you normally smoke, what you normally drink, and see what you can come up with on a pairing with a lighter body, lighter medium bodied cigar, lighter medium bold, boldness of a cigar, and a lighter medium bodied drink. Let's see what you got. You guys up for the challenge? I hope so. You guys have been challenging us and we've been stepping up. So it's, it, it's, it's reversed on this. Not doing a contest on this. This is a challenge for you to 
grow your palate to, as what we've been saying recently, take your pairings on to the next level. That's what I hope you do. And that's the reason for the challenge on this. Well, on that note, I am going to bring this set, this episode of the Twisted Pair to a close, uh, where we've been exploring white wines with a cigar. Uh, again, the wines are the Casa Americo from uh, Portugal, that is a forty percent Bacal. 30% uh, Cerecio Blanco and a 30% Encruzado grape. And the other one has been the, uh, the El Monticello Grappolo, which is a Vermentino grape. And this one is out of Italy. And the pairing tonight has been with uh, Toronto. Uh, I forget the name of the cigar and I lost the band. Um, anyways, it, it's it's the Toronto uh, with the uh, natural Habano wrapper and a Nicaraguan uh, long fillers and binders, all Nicaraguan. Uh, the pairing was nice, not a great pairing. As I recommended, I would pair with these two types of wines and white wines. Uh, a lighter to medium bold intensity of a cigar one from it's going to have more earthy type notes to it more uh, tropical fruit type notes to it so go with uh, uh, Dominican Republic um, Cuban uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper would be great with this Bono wrapper is nice from those types from those regions as well so Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thank you for jumping on with me. And until next week, which we will have Red back with us next week. Uh, until next week, explore your pairings because there's something for everyone. Thank you and have a good night.